welcome to this cosplay tutorial. Just a little disclaimer, this is probably the cosplay that has taken me longer to finish than anything else I've ever done. But it's finally done, considering it took me about two years of ups and downs and experimenting. I didn't really film enough to make a real tutorial out of it. But I still wanted to make a video out of what I already have because there are so little references on how to make a Verisa cosplay. Many references on Sylvanas though, but not really the same now, is it? Okay, let's go! Once I found the one good reference picture I needed, link is in the description, I started copying the pattern. By wrapping the body part I needed in plastic wrap and masking tape, I could easily draw the pattern directly where it needed to be. I cut the parts into several separate pieces so I could draw it flat on a piece of paper to then transfer it to EVA foam and then cover it with warbler. I know you don't really need warbler to do this and just the foam is enough, but I didn't know that when I started so lesson learned for my next big project. Never stop learning! For the glowing crystal details on the armor, I first made the pieces I needed out of clay. Once that was done, I made a silicone mold of them once they were fully dried. Using those molds, I made parts out of resin. These are very toxic fumes, so protect your lungs and your eyes just to be on the safe side. I put together the two liquids like the description said and mixed it well before pouring it slowly into the silicone molds. When the resin has a slightly tougher consistency, you can add LED light bulbs into it if they stand up by themselves. I managed to do this with a few of them just to experiment with electronics a bit. What's a big project without big challenges? To get the resin to look like actual gems, I used some cheap nail polish and aluminium foil. First a layer of glitter polish, then dark shimmery teal, then bright green and a light teal to finish. Before the last layer was set, I put a tiny piece of foil on the back to reflect and spread the lights more inside the gem. But if you do have LED light bulbs in there, don't make the foil touch it. That will ruin the light bulb and you have to start over. For the sewing, I don't really know what to tell you. I used stretchy jersey fabrics so it could breathe and be more shaped after the body considering I'm putting a whole freaking armor on top of all this. There were a million parts and weird patterns to figure out and I don't even think I have a single video from when I made the cape and the tabard. But here is a close-up from the result of all those. The belt was a piece of brown leather fabric with a few details made out of foam that was fastened with more leather pieces. For all the armor parts, I used Vorbla around each foam piece and glued them together with the magic of Vorbla itself. I used more Vorbla for details and to fasten the D-rings for later connections. Then it was time to dig through the toolbox. I used my Dremel to sand down some of the foam pieces before covering them with Vorbla, but also to sand down the exterior of some of the rough pieces as well. Like for example the connections between two pieces of Vorbla. Last thing I used the Dremel for was to make sort of a dragon scale texture in some areas of the armor. At least that's what I was going for. I actually ended up throwing away the whole breastplate piece and made it all out of foam instead because it was too complicated to get into it and it also weighed way too much to wear for a long time. But I still used the Dremel on the other armor pieces and used a soldering iron to melt the same texture in the foam of the new breastplate. Now I wanted to play a bit with electronics because I don't have much experience with it and the only way to get better is to try and fail. That's why some armor pieces have awesome glowing gems other pieces does not. I simply didn't get it to work and unfortunately I gave up. But hey, maybe I'll succeed next time. I think this is where I packed away the costume for several months and when I finally started working on it again I didn't really think about filming any of it so sorry for the massive hole right in the middle of the process but here's the rest of it. So I sanded and sanded the armor before applying a few coats of gesso not including my foam breastplate, before sending some more. 
After that, I went over all the pieces with some black Plasti Dip for a smooth surface, ready for the paint job. For the paint job, I used two different tones of blue, one dark and one lighter one. For highlighting, I dabbed some very pale blue paint in corners and some places where I imagined the sun would make highlights. To mark the dragon scales better, I painted the creases with white, then used a thin line of black on each side of the white to make a shadow effect. For the leather straps on the armor, I simply painted them brown. The metal details are simply just a little bit of rub and buff that I smoothed out on the pieces with an old cloth. To fasten all this armor, I used a bunch of D-rings inside the armor pieces and fastened it to the rest of the cosplay with a lot of strings and straps. Then there was this thing. The bow was tricky, but I found that finding reference photos for Tyrande Whisperwind's bow, which is basically the same one, just with different feather colors, was a lot easier, so I went with that. I drew a picture and made it into a big PDF file so I could print it real size to what I wanted. I printed and taped all the parts together before cutting out the bow, transferring the pattern onto several layers of EVA foam with a little bit of PVC pipe as a structural base. Then, as with the armor, I put some layers of gesso, sanded it down smooth, then went over the whole thing with Plasti Dip. The paint job for the base coat and metal parts were also the same. Only thing different was to paint the wood. I've never done it before and I'm not very strong on painting organic matter, but the finished result I found okay for a first-timer. Lastly, I tied a long black elastic string on the bow and with that, this prop was done. Whew! Two years of work, a whole lot of challenges and tears, and probably a little bit of blood. But finally, I'm able to show you the result of all this. It's not perfect, but it's only my second armor cosplay, so I'm really happy with it. I hope you liked this video. For more, don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and if you want to support my work, you can always get me a cup of coffee. All links are in the description below. Bye bye!